Second wife was Elsa Einstein. <laughs> Main name Einstein. <laughs> That's what happens when you're kissing on your cousin. Here we go. Are you ready to play? Twitch Physics Challenge. Did it work? <laughs> Welcome to the channel. Here we go. Okay, so if you guys were not with us on Sunday when we tested this out, let me give you a little rundown of how this works. I will be putting up the rules to the questions right now. There we go. Okay, so let's just talk about the rules right here. Twitch physics challenge. The correct answers gain points. Wrong answers lose points. The quicker you answer, the more points you win or lose. Not answering doesn't affect your points. The player with the most points at the end is the winner. Are you guys ready to begin? This is golf scoring, right? <laughs> Question one. Einstein's first wife's first name was Maleva. What was her maiden name? Was it Albert? Marriage? Einstein? Or Planck? The correct answer is marriage. Good job. Einstein was not her maiden name. Her maiden name is the name before marriage. Second wife was Elsa Einstein. <laughs> maiden name Einstein. <laughs> That's what happens when you're kissing on your cousin. Next question. In quantum mechanics, H is known as Planck's constant. The reduced Planck's constant is H divided by what? Is it 2 pi, the gravitational constant, Euler's constant, or pi? I can no longer handwrite H without H bar. Me too. I am ruined by quantum mechanics in that way. <laughs> I do it constantly. Here we go. The answer is 2 pi. Very good. Lots of people got that one correct. Excellent job. It is true. The reduced Planck's constant, which we'll be seeing in our quantum computing discussion series today, uh, does in fact consist of H, which is Planck's constant, divided by 2 pi. All right, next question. Here we go. Question number three. <clears throat> you drop a ball from 10 meters high, taking G, the acceleration due to gravity, is 10, and negligible air resistant. What is the velocity of the ball as it hits the ground? I'm curious to see how people do with this one. You actually have to do the math in your head. But the math is not that difficult if you know one thing, which was the square root of 2. How do we do? Oh, yes, that was good. The The formula for velocity is the square root of 2 times gh. If g is 10, h is 10, then the square root of that is 10 times the square root of 2, which is 1.412, so we get 14.1. Very good. What do you mean? Boo. It's fun. It's fun. You can do it really quickly in your head if you know that 1 half mv squared is equal to mgh. The m's cancel. You take the 2 to the other side. V equals the square root of 2gh. Ah, uh, all right. You're late. It's okay. You have time to make it up. Two phys physicists drafted, excuse me, physicists drafted competing formalisms for QFT. One was Richard Feynman. Who was the other? Of course, this was more specifically quantum QED, um, but it was, you know, relativistic quantum mechanics. It was the quantum field theory of the time. I go with your boy. Unfortunately, I think that's incorrect. <laughs> uh... Richard Feynman and Richard Feynman. Of course, it was Richard Feynman and Richard Feynman. Uh, that was a quote by Richard Feynman. Julian Schwinger is the uh, Julian Schwinger was the person who came up with the canonical formalism for QED, uh, which was in I, I don't want to say opposition, but maybe opposition for the spotlight with Richard Feynman and his Feynman diagrams associated with path integration. Of course, now we know the canonical form has path integration or Feynman di diagrams as well. All right, next question. On a related note to the last one, so who was the physicist who mathematically connected these two formalisms? Was it A, Albert Einstein, B, Julian Schwinger, C, R F Freeman Dyson, or D, Paul Dirac? Oppenheimer loved him for it. And people didn't, fi people couldn't figure out why Oppenheimer was like so fond of, of him for this. Uh, but Oppenheimer loved him for it. 
and uh, then invited him to the Institute for Advanced Study, the answer is our uh, recently passed along Freeman Dyson. Next question. What is, uh, what is KBLNW? Is it A, entropy, B, science, C, Gibbs free energy, or D, temperature? Uh, of course, that's Boltzmann's constant times the natural log of W, where W is the states. It's the states. What a weird way to write that. Why? W is like the English term for omega, right? KB, Ln, omega? Come on. Come on. Come on. Even K, Ln, omega is on his tombstone. It's not in LaTeX, so it must be false. The answer is, of course, entropy. Good job. Well done. <laughs> Notation questions. Why? This is a famous formula. This is a famous formula. I'm going to stick to things that are very well known. Hoping to get zero by the end. <laughs> All right. What is the name given to a process where heat does not enter or leave? Is it A, adiabatic, B, isobaric, C, isocream, or D, isochloric? I love me a big bowl of ice cream. I don't know. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I literally had to stop myself from putting joke answers down because I didn't, I had too many joke answers <laughs> and there wasn't enough real answers to confuse you. The correct answer is, of course, adiabatic. Great job. One person did go for ice cream. <laughs> oh, man. So good. Next question is... Einstein was famously quoted as saying, God does not play what? Is it A, canasta, B, dice, C, Twitch physics challenge with your host, Physics OH, or D, hopscotch? My, uh, my instinct is telling me hopscotch. No, the answer is, of course, dice. Oh, a perfect score. There we go. Well done, chat. Well done. Very good. The next question. We're on question eight. No, we're on question nine. We're moving on right along here what culinary term is often used to distinguish between types of neutrino is it a flavor b mouthfeel c seasoning or d texture this one i had a great <laughs> i had a great joke answer for but i ended up not using it it was umami <laughs> although i spelled it like ooh Mommy. <laughs> Definitely mouthfeel. I feel like mouthfeel was a good second choice for a joke answer, though. Uh, so if you wrote mouthfeel, I do apologize. Um, that's a muon right there. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> the answer is, of course, Flavors, well done, well done. Which of course, we call them flavors, but it is of course the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino and the tau neutrino. <laughs> but here we go, we are on to question number 10. And Koopa gave it away earlier. Freeman Dyson was famously remembered for never having one of these. A, a Dyson sphere, B, a published paper, C, a PhD, or D, a spouse. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> well, Koopa will get it right. <laughs> Fine, we'll see how people do. See if people remember. Plus, we had new people come in. Let's see how you guys fared with this question. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> While, of course, he didn't have a Dyson Sphere, that was certainly not what he was famous for. Uh, he, uh, the Dyson Sphere was simply just an idea. The PhD, he in fact never even attained a PhD. And he was famous for that. He was like, some people say he was the last, the last physicist to ever get through without a PhD. I did get you. Dyson Sphere was just an idea at the time. But a PhD was a real thing that he never actually had. Question number 11. Inflationary theory was developed to solve two of the universe's big problems. Flatness and... A, dark energy, B, horizon, C, dark matter, or D, how to deal with physics OH. I don't care if I get negative points. I just want to write how to deal with physics OH. Here we go. The answer is the horizon problem. The flatness and the horizon problems are the big problems that inflationary theory solves. 
Uh, of course, does not solve the problem of dark energy because we don't have a solution for that problem yet. We don't know what it is or where it comes from or how it behaves or anything like that. But the flatness and the horizon problems are big problems of cosmology that we have solved with the inflationary theory. And any theory that wants to match the inflationary theory has to solve these two big problems or else we'd be going backwards. Boo! <laughs> I love it. It also solves the magnetic monopole problem. I knew there was more, but I didn't know exactly what they were. Uh, and I knew that this would be a good one uh, because it's 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 th this one's attainable. The answer is attainable if you know if you know it. There it is. Cosmology is just B tier astronomy. <laughs> Ooh. Usually we have like you know inter science smack talk, but not usually inter physics smack talk. I like it. I like it. The next question, question number twelve is. <clears throat> Gelman's success with QCD was reflected in his famous book titled The Quark and the A. Hippo, B. Monk, C. Jaguar, or D. Mr. Mark. Uh, I haven't passed Ian Evan here. I'm trying to answer QCD question. There you go, though. Love it. Love it. That's the fun part, though. This is just history stuff, too, so it's good. It's good. All right. Are you ready? It is the Quark and the... Jaguar. Jaguar got nine points. Monk got six. Hippo got four. And Mr. Mark. Of course, that was the, the original uh, I, inspiration behind naming the quark, which will maybe that will be a question later. Next question. Here we go. Question number 13. The famous acronym is used by high school students, high school geometry and intro physics students to find sides of a right triangle. Is it Kosatoa? Sakatoa, Sakotoa, Tosakoa. <laughs> you misclicked. No good. No good. National culture questions now. Oh, come on. The audible booze. This is a classic. You need this to know vectors. Look at that. 16 people. Okay. <laughs> One of these is a misclick. Unless... Unless, of course, Noah misclicked onto so Sokotoa. It is very cultural. Is it really cultural? I apologize if it is. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> I can't get away from it. What was Galileo's reaction to the Pope's openness of heliocentric, of his heliocentric explorations? Of course, Galileo, famous for trying to write down heliocentric ideas at the time of a geocentric religious, uh, religious, um, I don't know what you want to call it. A geocentric religious tyranny, I guess. I don't know what you want to call it. History questions are tough. That's the point though. That's what's fun about it. This is what's famous though. What did he do? Did he write a book mocking the Pope? Did he publish a slew of heliocentric papers? Did he burn down the church? Or did he shout in the square about the heliocentric solar system? The answer is, as some of you may know, here we go, let's figure out. He wrote a book mocking the Pope. It was a dialogue between two people. One person was arguing for the geocentric universe. One was arguing for the heliocentric universe. And in the dialogue, he made the person who I think it was a play too in the Pope. Like there's some stories, there's some stories I've heard, but all I know is for sure he wrote a manuscript, a book, where there was a dialogue between two characters. One person was arguing for a heliocentric universe, and one was arguing for a geocentric universe. And the person who was arguing for the geocentric universe, Galileo purposely made them look like an absolute fool. <laughs> and the Pope was not happy. He had many, many uh run-ins with the uh, the church and his ideas on heliocentrism. Yes, the Pope was his friend. That was what made it so much worse. And then he ended up going on house arrest for the rest of his life. <laughs> Which makes sense, I guess. If he made it at least somewhat of an argument, then it was like, so the Pope gave him an inch and he basically took a mile with it. Um, and it was really good. Okay, we're on to the last question. Here we go. Uh, but he couldn't publish a slew of heliocentric papers uh, that was still not okay by the Pope's um, by the Pope's, uh, ideas. Okay, so if, this is the last question, if you fly by a black hole, you experience A, its gravitational effect, B, a giant vacuum cleaner, C, the effect known as spaghetti, or D, nothing. You experience absolutely nothing. 
tidal forces. You would still experience, of course, you would experience the gravitational effects. Uh, <laughs> you know, people roll the effect known as spaghetti. It was a joke. You know, spaghetti. <laughs> Anyways, that was fantastic. All right. Are we ready to see the outcome of today's game show? Here we go. Show final results. Da, da, da. The winner for today is Cosmolano with 162,000 points. 891 followed closely in second by High Altitude Chankov. And third, Contestant 43. Who was Contestant 43, if I may ask? Uh, followed up by fourth and fifth. Fourth being some guy with meh internet. And Noah Royce. Very good, everybody. Congratulations, Cosmolano.